Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about the properties of ethanol that make ethanol a very good solvent. In this video, we're going to go to the next stop point, which says describe the conditions under which fermentation of sugars is promoted. So first, there's two words we need to go over, um, fermentation and promoted. I'll start with the promoted. Promoted just means helps helps is probably a better way. So a better way of looking at it. So describe conditions under which fermentation of sugar is helped or made to go faster. And that's promoted. And fermentation, what fermentation was, was converting sugar, so converting, which means changing sugar, which is usually glucose, into ethanol and carbon dioxide. So we start with this, we start with this. These are our reactants, sugar, mostly glucose. And then these are our products, both ethanol and carbon dioxide. And that's fermentation. We're going from sugar into ethanol and carbon dioxide. And usually we have a yeast to make that happen. Now, we talked about ethanol, that ethanol is a good solvent. And then ethanol can be used as fuel. But there's also another reason why people want to make ethanol, because ethanol is also an alcohol. So this can also be an alcohol. So it's actually used to make both beer and wine. So we use the sugar from barley to make beer and the sugar from grapes to make wine. So that's fermentation. Fermentation is the changing of sugar into ethanol and we produce carbon dioxide as a byproduct, but we want to have ethanol. And the reason why we make that ethanol is because ethanol is an alcohol, so we can use that to make beer and wine. I'm going to talk about, because the actual document says, describe conditions under which fermentation of sugars is promoted. So what conditions make the fermentation of sugar go better or go faster? What conditions help that? That's what I'll discuss next. So these are the ideal conditions. Um, aqueous carbohydrates, temperatures of around 37 degrees Celsius. We have to have a yeast present and anaerobic conditions as well. I'll start with the yeast present. The yeast is a type of organism. An organism is a living thing, so yeast is an organism. And what these yeasts can do, they can actually produce an enzyme. And this enzyme is a catalyst. So I'm going to write catalyst. So this enzyme actually speeds up reactions. And what this enzyme does is it speeds up the reaction, which is sugar going into ethanol, turning sugar into ethanol. So if we have a yeast present, the yeast will produce enzymes which will make sugars turn into ethanol faster. So usually maybe if sugars might go into ethanol at a certain rate, maybe it might take days or years or, or even longer, but if you have this enzyme present which is produced by yeast, it will be a lot faster. So the yeast produces, is an organism that produces enzymes and the enzymes are catalysts for the fermentation of sugar to ethanol. So we have to have so a yeast present, that was number one. A yeast present, for the most important one. And number two was, again these are not necessarily in any, any um, sequence, they're all quite important, is that we have to have aqueous carbohydrates. What I mean with aqueous, aqueous means dissolved in water. So we want to make sure we have carbohydrates, which are usually sugars, starch, glucose, maltose, and sucrose. These are all different types of carbohydrates, some complex, such as starch, and some simple carbohydrates, such as glucose and maltose and sucrose, and the glucose, maltose, and sucrose are sugars. Now we want to have these in an aqueous form present, because if they are actually dissolved, that means these enzymes, which are produced by the yeast, can help act on them. If they're not dissolved, then the yeast, the enzymes won't be able to actually break down the carbohydrates. So they have to be dissolved. And we want to make sure we have carbohydrates because remember these sugars are the first part in turning sugars into ethanol. If you have no sugars, we have nothing that we can turn into ethanol. So we have to have aqueous carbohydrates present. Also, we need, want to make sure we have temperatures of around 37 degrees Celsius. And some, for example, when it comes to the enzymes that are in wine making, involved in winemaking, they usually need to have a 
temperature which can be a bit lower, 25 degrees Celsius. For most of the beer ones and the other ones, it's about 37 degrees Celsius. The reason why is because these enzymes become denatured if it's either too, hot, too low or too high. And if it's denatured, that means these enzymes stop working. So these enzymes are obviously really important. If the temperatures are not ideal, if it's too high or too low, then enzymes enzymes stop working properly. So if it's not ideal, if not ideal, so if the temperature is not ideal, then they don't work properly. So we have, want to keep a temperature of around about a boy temperature of 37 degrees Celsius for the majority of yeasts. If it's too high, the yeast will also die as well. Um, now another one is anaerobic conditions. So what I mean by anaerobic is anaerobic means no oxygen. So you want to have no oxygen present. And one of the reasons why is because if you have oxygen present, then what the yeast will do, it will use those sugars and turn sugar into water. And we don't want that to happen because we want to have sugar turn into ethanol. So if we have oxygen present, then what this yeast will do instead is turn sugar into water. So this is if we have oxygen. Or in aerobic conditions, this is what would happen. That's why we want to make sure we have no oxygen because we don't want this to happen because we want to make sure our yeast turns the sugar into ethanol instead. And it will happen if we have anaerobic conditions. So if you have no oxygen present. Right, so I'll go over those four again. We want to make sure we have yeast present because the yeast produce enzymes. They help sugars be broken down into ethanol. We want to make sure we have our aqueous carbohydrates. Aqueous means it's dissolved in water and carbohydrates are usually sugars. So we want to make sure they're dissolved in water so the yeast can actually have contact with them. And we want to make sure we have carbohydrates because we need to have carbohydrates to go from sugars to ethanol. We want to make sure we have a temperature of around 37 degrees Celsius. The reason why is because enzymes don't work properly if the temperature is too high or too low. And we want to make sure we have anaerobic conditions. So we have no oxygen present because if we have oxygen present, then sugar will be turned into water, which is not good because we want to make sure sugar gets turned into ethanol. And that will happen if we have anaerobic conditions. Now these are some of the bonus conditions. These are the first four were extremely important, and these four other two are are pretty important, but not always present. We want to make sure we have an alcohol to tolerant yeast. If we have too much alcohol, it will actually kill most of the yeast. Most yeast um, have about a 12 to 14 percent alcohol limit. So once they have turned a certain amount of sugar into ethanol, they'll die because the alcohol content will be too high. But if you can make an alcohol tolerant yeast, you can actually go higher than that. You can go higher than 12 to 14 percent because it can, they can survive higher amounts. Because alcohol is poisonous to a degree if there's too much of it. So if we have alcohol tolerant yeast, we can produce ones which have are more tolerant to alcohol, which means, means we can produce wines which have a higher percentage. And also we might want to have slightly acidic conditions. What I mean by that is conditions which kill bacteria. So these slightly acidic conditions, they kill bacteria. And one problem with bacteria is that bacteria can turn, so they can turn ethanol into vinegar. Vinegar has a very sour taste that would make our wine everything taste very sour and that would not be good. So by having these acidic conditions we make sure we kill that bacteria that would otherwise turn ethanol into vinegar. And so these are the six reasons. The last these two, five and six, were most of the big brewing companies that would make lots of beer would have these present. But overall the other four were the most important ones. So yeast present, aqueous carbohydrates, temperature of around 37 degrees Celsius and anaerobic conditions. So these were the descriptions of the ideal circumstances, which is dot point itself. Describe conditions under which fermentation of sugars is promoted. So I hope that was useful.